if Terry McMillan got cheated on with a white woman because the amount of white women mentioned in this movie, <laughs> I was like, well, damn. So we are a couple of years past Jungle Fever. Black men being with white women has always been a conversation that has been present in my home and present in my friend groups. Yes. Because Bernadine, her husband, her husband left her for a white woman. 11 years. She was his lover and his secretary, working every day of the week. Was at the job when no one else was there. Come on, Mary. You on your feet. Did you see Kenya Moore steal Savannah's man when she exhaled? You haven't danced with me all night. Can you get your ass back there and go see what Brooklyn doing? This was way before Brooklyn, though. All right, so this movie, based on the book, Waiting to Exhale. Why are we holding our breath? Child, we, we holding our breath to get a man. We, you, well, that, that collective, we got to go, baby. I am <sighs> breathing. It's 1995. All these women are in their 30s. Um, Savannah says she was 33. And the whole <laughs> conversation is... Oh, I, I don't have a man. I need a man. My man's cheating on me with a white woman. Or this man got a white woman. Mm-hmm. And ain't, to the point, then these women, they're they're literally settling for married men. Yeah. Savannah's mama is like, he a good man, Savannah. But she's like, but he married. You know who watched this movie? Who? Molly. Because her co-worker who wasn't white, but she wasn't black, she had got married to a black dude. She's seeing these black dudes with these white women in L.A. And then she started messing with Dro, a married man. So she True. had just finished getting watching. But I, for one, don't think that people, that most people are solitary creatures. So to a certain extent. Oh, yes. You do need, I believe in partnership. Yeah. Like, do you need a man? Maybe. I don't know. Like, or do you, you know, some people I think people who want it definitely need romantic partnership. I just, I don't, I think what the show, I I think what the film was teaching us was that we should start prioritizing those platonic friendships the same way we do like the romantic ones. I think like a lot of cultural critics like Julesy, um, Kim of Four Harriet, like this is what they've been saying for like a decade now. And I think this film was was also teaching us that. I didn't really get any lessons from this film. <laughs> I didn't know if this was like side chick friendly because it was all messing with married men. Also, they was having okay, so Savannah and Robin are having horrible sex. Why? You're not even having a good time. I don't think it's about the sex. No, but even, okay, so Robin, we see her with with different partners. The Mm -hmm. first one, the guy from her job, um, the dark-skinned, heavy-set dude. Michael. She says, Michael, she says she don't really like him. Mm -hmm. She's not attracted to him. She just needs somebody, I guess, to hold or whatever. Yeah. But then she bring him to her house. Her house is full of rag dolls, which I don't understand. And that bed is small as hell. Yeah, like a full size. Twins. But I'm like, you're not even having great sex. Like, you're not, it's, you're not even enjoying yourself. Like, with none of the men she was with, it wasn't like, there was no, I didn't see no pleasure. It was always, well, I think that like, she, strife. I think she enjoys herself with Russell even though we never really see her be intimate with Russell. And I think that's it. Because we never see a sex scene between those two, right? Do we? Which one was Russell? Uh, Leon. Well, she got pregnant by him. But we never see them be intimate is oh. what I'm saying. And no. so with with Michael, the sex the first time isn't good. But I think that Michael could have been a catch for her. 